this is finally the time to deal a little with the file uploading from our request. So we are going to receive the image profile of a user, which is basically a file, and we are going to store that image into our system. Additionally, in the case that the user is updating its profile from a previous image to a new one, well, we need to detach that image, remove that as well from our systems file and store the new one. That is exactly what we have to do. And fortunately, once again, for us, Laravel is going to help us a lot with it. Let's do search about Laravel request file upload. If we check that, you can see retrieving uploaded files. And well, eventually what we have to do is to say request file photo, that is a way, or another way is just request photo or image in our case. We can eventually verify if we have a file into our request, which in our case should be image, and we can validate some other things. If it is a valid file, we can obtain the path, we can obtain the extension, all of that is thanks to the file system that we can use. And eventually that we are talking about file systems, we can store our images, our photos, our files in general to a specific disk. This is exactly what the file systems is. Basically, we specify throw a name for a file system or basically a disk where we want to, by default, store the information, what is going to be located and how it's going to be handled. So let's check a little about the file systems. And well, eventually we can create several disks. In fact, if you check in the config file called file systems, we have the local file system, public S3. In fact, we can eventually upload files to the Amazon storage service or any other that you can configure. But we are going to focus for now in the local ones. Basically, we are going to store directly the images in our public folder or similars. We are not going to talk about yet the remote services, maybe in a future class. Now, we can eventually create our own disk, our own file systems, and we can use them and configure it. And there is a very interesting feature of Laravel called links. Basically, we are going to create, through this specific command, a link between two different locations, which is going to work through symbolic links. So, basically, what we store in app public is going to be mapped through a symbolic link to public storage. And that is exactly what we specify at the end of this configuration file. And once again, we can create, and eventually we are going to create our own links for the images. So once it is clear, as you can see, we can use the different drivers, we can prepare and configure our system. And of course, we can eventually upload files and store the files as you can see. Eventually, well, once again, using the store method, which is going to receive here the name of the disk and the path if we need. So the second parameter is the name of the disk that we configured and the first parameter is the path from this specific disk or file system that we configured. And of course, as you may imagine, we can, well, just go and remove a file, modify them and everything that we need through the file system of variable. So once it is completely clear, let's do write some code. So the first step is to create our own file system. So this is going to be much easier for us to create that specific images in the location that we need. So let's copy the public configuration and to preserve the alphabetical order, this is going to be called images. Then the driver is going to be local and we are going to store the images in the app public slash images. So you can see here we have in the storage path, an app folder with the public folder inside. And there we just need to create this images folder. So let's to create a new folder called images. This folder must exist because we are going to, in a few minutes, create a symbolic link between this location and the public images folder that is not going to exist, but will be a symbolic link. Using symbolic links, we can easily change the origin or especially the target of our symbolic links, saying that, for example, 
now the images is not stored directly in public images but in public files or public profiles or something like that that is going to bring us a lot of flexibility as well so once we have this the url is going to be the app url that we have configured in the environment file and it is going to be on images now once we have this let's to create our own symbolic link so we are going to use the public path which is exactly here and there we are going to put an images file this is once again a symbolic link eventually this file or this folder does not exist directly is a symbolic link from app public slash images so now to create this symbolic link then we need to go to our command prompt and issue php artisan storage link and there we have so we already created those symbolic links and if we eventually reveal this location you can see how we have there the images and the storage and images is well empty for now and the storage will have the images folder inside which is empty of course so once we have this we already configured this disk and we can use it to store well images once we receive them from the request we already know how we can receive them from the documentation so let's to do it if we go so to our profile controller on app http controllers there is of course the code that we need to add after saving the changes in the user we can attach or modify the information of the image as well so before to continue with this I need to clarify something as we are dealing with files images and something that can be created inside the structure of our project and probably you are using git or basically github in general or bitbucket or gitlab etc to synchronize the changes in your project you probably want to ignore the files that you have into the images folder so eventually Laravel already do that for you but for the corresponding locations we are creating new folders here so we need to ignore them as well so eventually in the general git ignore file this is not exactly something that you have to do but probably if you use git please follow the steps as the same as we are ignoring the public storage folder we are going to ignore the public images folder in that way the symbolic link that we are creating here in public called images is going to be completely ignored and the same of course for storage now additionally inside the storage folder that we have here we have the public and inside we have the images folder now if you check this git ignore file it is saying hey ignore everything this is the asterisk but ignore the file with the name git ignore itself this is going to ensure that we have the public folder always even when we are ignoring the content inside but once again we need to say in the other git ignore file that we want to ignore anything inside the public folder so this might sound a little let's say confusing but what we are getting sure here is that we are not ignoring this file but we are ignoring the other files that are inside the public folder so we can do something pretty similar in the images folder because this folder must exist but we need to ignore any content that we put there so the only thing is going to be duplicate this git ignore file inside the images folder there we have so exactly the same we are ignoring anything except this git ignore file but to avoid eventually that this git ignore file gets ignored from the public folder we need to well add an exception to this so we are going to say hey don't ignore the images folder that we have exactly here <laughs> that's all maybe sounds a little weird but if you are using git this is going to save you some headache and of course it's going to avoid that you finished uploading generated files in your project so once it is done let's go back to our profile controller now once we saved the user information we need to be sure if we received a file so if the request has a file remember because in the validation image could be nullable if we check the definition here should be an image but could be nullable so we should not receive something in some cases so we need to be sure 
that we are going to act only if we eventually received that specific file. So if this has a file in the images name, we can proceed. So what can we do? There are two different possibilities. This is the first time that this user is specifying an image for the profile. So what we do is, well, user image. Remember, there is a relationship between user and image. If you check the definition of the user model, there you have the image relationship. So through this relationship, we are going to create a new image specifying a set of information. What is the information? Well, if you remember, the image model only has a path. So, well, we need to specify a path. What is going to be the path of this file? Well, that is going to work through the request. And remember, we can access to the image. We already know that we have a file called image and we can store this image into our file system. And what is the name of the file system? It is images. And inside the images folder, we are going to have, for example, the images for products or the images for users. For now, we are focusing only on images for users. So we are going to create a users folder inside. And the name of the disk is images. So here we are specifying the name of the disk that we just configured. And here in the first parameter, we are specifying the subfolder from the root of this disk. So it is in the storage path, app, public images, and there inside is going to be created from Laravel, the users folder. So once it is created, this specific image is associated to this specific user. Great. But the problem here is what happened if the user already have an image? We will be attaching and attaching and creating and creating images one after other. And we don't want that. So if the user already have an image, it means this is completely different from null. We can eventually remove the original image. How can we do it? Well, from the storage, the class that we already know, we can call a method which is delete, but we need to specify the disk that we want to use. And remember the name of the disk is images. And from there, we just need to call to delete. What we are going to delete? Well, just the user image. And from this image, we need to access to the path. So at this point, we are saying, hey, from the images disk, because we are storing all the user images there, just remove the one that matches with this specific path. But more than that, as this user already have that image in the pivot table, remember there is a polymorphic relationship, we need to remove that relationship as well because we are going to store or basically create a new image for this specific user. So we have user image and then we remove that specific instance from the database and we can eventually create a new one. So in this way, we are avoiding to create multiple images from one single user. Be sure to import the definition of storage coming directly from Illuminate support facades storage. And once we have that, well, that's all that we need. We already have all the logic to upload an image here. We already have the images and the symbolic links created. So let's to validate if everything is working properly. Let's go to our project, refresh just in case. And we are going to modify the image. For example, we are going to use this one and we go to edit, profile edited. And if we go to our project, that is it. We should have here an image stored, but it looks like not. Something failed in the process. And let me verify here. Yes, image, uh, I made a typo here. We are verifying if we received a field called image, we know. so. Let me try to verify that again because it didn't fail. It didn't create the file in other locations. So let's to specify this same file again. Let's to edit. There is it. And finally, we have the users folder created and there is the image that we specified. Now, if we go to PHP Artisan Tinker, we can try to obtain all the set of images specifying the corresponding namespace. And there we have the last one that we created is this one for this specific user, the one that is authenticated with this specific name generated randomly. Once again, 
If we try to update this user profile with a new image, for example, this one, and try to edit, we are going to see how this is going to remove the previous one. You can see how we still having only one image. This is the new one. And if we obtain the full list of images once again from here, that is it. You can see how we don't have nothing previously from that. And this is the new image with the exact same name as you can see exactly here. This is exactly the same name of the file. So this is working. This is removing the old image in case that it exists. In fact, if that image does not exist for some reason, this is not going to fail. This is not going to send any kind of error. Basically, it's going to just don't remove nothing that is not there. And of course, we are attaching that specific image to the user. Now, that's all during this class. And let's to go to the following one to finish with the detail to well, once we have the image profile for a user to show that correspondingly in our user interface. So let's see how to do it in the following class. See you there.